Hello, everyone. Thank you all for uh, thank you for all for joining. We're going to cover uh, we're going to talk a lot about Chrome OS and what our strategy is, particularly for businesses and for enterprise. Uh, what we're doing uh, with uh, with Chrome OS. Um, and so my name is Rajan Sheth, and I'm the director of product management for Chrome uh, for Business and Education. Uh, and we've been doing a variety of things over the course of the last several years with uh, with Chrome OS, um, particularly oriented around education, but now really starting to focus a lot. More more on enterprise, and we, we have some very, very interesting uh, places where we think this is applicable in enterprise. So before we start off, um, I want to kind of start with a story. So um, February 22nd was the 10-year anniversary of uh, G Suite, which used to be called Google Apps uh, in the enterprise, and I was the first uh, product manager for, for G Suite, and remember that day quite quite well, because we launched our first kind of for-pay product uh, out, out of Google that was not an ads product. And um, it was interesting to think back to that time, because one of the first things that we did was we went on a tour of customers, and we talked to CIOs of a variety of types uh, about uh, G Suite and about the cloud uh, at that time. And almost universally, we were, we were uh, thrown out of the door. Um, and I, I in particular remember one customer where um, we went in, five minutes into the meeting, they started to realize what I was talking to them about is taking their email and moving it to our servers. And so he clarified and said, are you asking me really to take my email and move it to your servers? And I said, yeah. And said, all right, I think we're done here. And so he gets up, leaves the room, and, and that was it. Um, and it's amazing to see, though, how that has changed over that cor course of time. Something that seemed crazy, uh, being able to put your, your data in the cloud, is now the mainstream. It's, it's, it's why all of us are here. What's interesting, though, is that we really think we're only at the cusp of that. And there's much more that can be done. And so much else has also changed with mobility, with devices. So you think about kind of how we th thought about devices back then. All of us probably had one laptop, and that was all we used uh, for, for everything that we did. Now the world has changed dramatically. And it gives us many opportunities to kind of rethink the world and rethink what, what we do. So. The biggest opportunity here is for businesses to become data-centric. Um, and this is both a challenge as well as an opportunity. Um, almost every business has data, of course, uh, and, uh, and businesses have been data-centric to an extent for a long time. But what really changes right now is the, how rapidly you can take in the data, how rapidly you can process that data, and how rapidly you can do something uh, about it and actually change your business as a, as a result. And so what we want to help with, with the combination of Chrome devices and Android and Google Cloud, is to really help businesses become data-centric. And what I mean by that is kind of this flow right here. This is our, our connected workspaces uh, virtuous cycle. And where it all starts is instrumenting. Uh, first is instrumenting your business with, uh, with devices, with spaces, with, uh, with, with a, variety of, uh, a variety of places such that you're bringing data in. The second thing is drawing better insights out of, uh, out of that data. And then the third thing is actually making changes uh, with it, either through either by, via people actually looking at the data and making those changes, or via machines actually making those changes automatically in, in, uh, in their stead. And this is really the opportunity that we have. So imagine if every, imagine if every organization out there had all parts of its business connected to the cloud at all times. And when I say all parts, I don't just mean the knowledge workers that you would typically think of that are carrying around uh, smartphones and computers. I mean every worker. And I don't mean just every worker. I mean all of their customers as well, people that might be walking into a store, people that they might be interacting with. Uh, and also, I don't just mean the customers. I mean all of the spaces. So whether it's a retail store or a manufacturing shop floor or whatever it might be, what if everything there was also connected to the cloud? Imagine the kinds of things that you can do. I'll give you an example um, of this. So uh, in, in a retail store, um, 
you think about why we go to a store right now. Uh, you know, I buy a lot of things online, but, uh, but the reason I, t- I typically go to a store uh, is because I want to be able to experience the product. I want to be able to see it and touch it and feel it. I want to be able to browse and find other things I might be interested in. Uh, I might want to, to be able to leverage the expertise of the people in the store, and then I want that immediate gratification of being able to say, I want that item, and then be able to just walk out with it and buy it. And so... Those are all great, but the things that are missing are all the things that, it, that you get when you go online and buy. When I go online and shop, I can find something very, very quickly. I can find things that are related to the things that I like. It knows me, and so it knows what I, what I like and is able to actually um, tell me more about it. And then I can see reviews about that item to see what other people thought about it. When I walk into a physical store, typically I don't get any of that. And so how do we make it such that a space like that uh, is able to be, uh, is able to be uh, uh, better? So for example, I should be able to walk into a store and have a screen that greets me uh, to be able to tell me where in the store are things that I'm interested in, basically based on either something that I need to get or something that I'm interested in. When I find something, I should be able to ask the store clerk, and they should be knowledgeable enough to tell me everything that, they need, uh, that I need to know about, uh, about that item. I should be able to see more information about that uh, in terms of reviews, what other people think about it, things like that, and then I should be able to purchase it right then and there as quickly and seamlessly as possible and walk out. That's the kind of experience that really transforms that. And we want to do that for multiple industries. So the reality of the world is much, much different. So first of all, you know, there are about 3.25 billion workers that walk into a workplace of one type or another around the world right now. But there are only 750 million PCs in business uh, right now. And there are only about 300 million managed smartphones uh, out there right now. And so there's a large number of people that when they are in the workplace, they are not connected to the cloud. They don't have devices. They can't take advantage of the, of the kinds of things that I just talked about. Uh, and there are a lot of spaces that are also just not connected. So how do we actually make that a reality? So we believe that with Chrome OS and with Android, we have the right tools to be able to make that a reality. So both Chrome OS and Android were developed in the, in the age of the connected world. Uh, it was developed with the internet pervasively out there, with, with, with mobile internet out there uh, everywhere. And as a result of that, we built this with the concept of connectivity inherently built, uh, built into it. We've also built these, uh, these operating systems to be extensible across many, many, many different types of devices. Everything from a very large digital sign all the way down to a sensor or, uh, or a, a sensor hub or the Internet of Things and everything in between. And so as a result of that, we can now start to actually instrument and actually get devices into many more places and into many more people. And if you look at just the devices that, that, that go to people, we have OEMs that, that uh, you know, by the thousands that are actually manufacturing these kinds of, uh, kinds of devices. And so we can really start to address that gap of people that don't have access to devices. And with Chrome in particular, we're really focusing on two big things uh, to, to try to make this better. The first is to redefine the concept of productivity, and the second is the concept of connected workspaces. And so I'm going to go into these in, in a lot more detail, and we're going to show you some examples of, uh, of what we're talking about here. So when we think about productivity, the way I would think about this is that we usually in the past have thought about productivity as a laptop and a set of tools on that laptop to, be let, to let you be able to create documents or create presentations or create spreadsheets, things like that. What we now need to really think about is if we zoom out, what is productivity really? Especially if, you're, if you have a device in the hands of every employee out there. Productivity, for, for, for example, a field technician is going to be a very different t- uh, type of thing than productivity for somebody that's sitting uh, in an office. Um, productivity for, uh, for, for, a, for a salesperson is also a very different uh, thing. So how do we rethink of the concept of productivity? The other thing, though, is that we're getting to a world where mobility is in the hands of almost every Everybody. Almost everyone carries a smartphone uh, in their pocket. And so part one is how can we enable those smartphones to do great things uh, for, uh, for, for these workers? But then part two of that is that how do we enable devices uh, that are bigger, tablets, laptops, uh, and other things, 
that are connected to that mobile environment, that run the same applications, that are, that are continuous from that environment as opposed to discontinuous uh, from that environment and completely different environment. And so that's what we've been really thinking about with Chrome OS. How can Chrome OS be the right productivity device for the mobile world? So one of the big challenges that, uh, that people typically face is which device should you choose at what, uh, at what times? Um, a lot of times people don't have the luxury of having all, all of these devices. They may have one, they may, they, they may have two of these. Um, and you have to be switching back and forth between all of these. Um, what we're trying to figure out is, can we do it such that you don't have to choose and you don't have to switch uh, back and forth between these and we can make the device that can actually be versatile enough to be all of these things. And then the second thing is then how do we tie all of these things together? And so that's really what we've thought about as we've designed Chrome OS. So the first thing we did is we took a step back to say if we redefine the PC, what would it be? What would be the characteristics of the PC if we had to reinvent it? And we came up with this list. Um, one, it should be fast. Uh, you want to be able to get in and get to what you want to do as quickly as you, po as you possibly can. The second thing is it should be easy. So any user uh, should be able to start using it without any training and, and be able to get in and, and do what they, uh, what, they want to, what they want to do. And that lets you scale to users of many different types. Um, the third thing is that it should be secure. Um, Security is obviously a very, very difficult thing with devices, but especially if you want to have more and more devices out there, security becomes really critical. So how do we take the security model and turn it on its head and do, uh, do um, interesting things with it so that you can ensure just out of the box and inherently people are secure on their computers? One other aspect that was critical here that we didn't realize would be this critical when we first started this, uh, this uh, project, but has been crucial in a variety of uh, areas, is shareability. Um, with a Chromebook, I can pick up any Chromebook, log into it, and within seconds, I have everything I need. I have all my data, I have all my applications, I have even all my preferences, even down to the wallpaper, everything is the, uh, is the same. Um, and then I could put that away, go to another one, pick it up, and, and do the same thing. Um, in a world where everybody has their own PC, that doesn't really matter a whole lot. But what we're seeing is a shift there. And especially in a world where people want different devices at different times, you may not want to arm every single person with all devices at all times. You may want to have it such that people can pick up the right device whenever they need it and be able to do what they want, uh, what they want with it. One example of this is, uh, again, in retail stores. We've seen this uh, happen quite a bit, where they may have 50 sales associates that may go through that retail store on a given day, but they may have only room to be able to do two or three devices. But if they want to move all of their processes online, those 50 people are going to have to share those two or three devices very, very well. And Chrome has that built in inherently as one, uh, as one of its things. Um, a couple of last things is that these devices should get better over time. Typically, when you buy a device or when you, when, when you buy a PC, over time it gets worse and worse and worse and you know, more bloated and slower, and eventually you need to then just replace it with something else. We wanted to make it such that th these get actually better over time and they don't get worse. And the last thing is that we want it to be versatile yeah, so that it should be able to shift between different types of use cases and shift very naturally. So on that last point about versatility, um, there are two parts of it. One is kind of the continuity with what people are doing elsewhere, and then the second thing is the device itself. So in terms of continuity, we wanted to ensure that the way people are interacting with their smartphone is also how they can interact with their PC, and then they can start interacting with it in a different way as well when they need kind of full productivity, multiple windows, multi-processing, uh, multi things like that. And so there are a few areas that we looked at uh, with that. The first is the device uh, itself. So the device, um, originally Chromebooks, uh, Chromebooks have been laptop devices. And what we've now done is really focused on making, making them more versatile and making them convertible devices and, and uh, eventually things like detachable devices and tablets and things like that as well, uh, too. So the examples you see here are a couple of the new devices we, we released, the Samsung Chromebook Pro and, uh, and the uh, Asus Chromebook Flip. 
uh, where you can flip these devices over and you're, you're able to interact with them like a tablet and actually interact with them very well uh, as a tablet. Um, a couple of small things that we did to really make this uh, great. So the Samsung device is a three by two ratio, whereas most PC screens are a 16 by nine. Uh, ratio. And we did that because we knew that when you want to go into a tablet mode, a 3 by 2 ratio is actually a lot better. If I want to flip it on its side and, and look at it like a book or like a piece of paper, a 3 by 2 ratio is, 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 uh, is the right thing to do. So to that degree, we wanted to make it a great tablet. But then beyond that too, another thing that we see is very important is, is writing and stylus. And so we built styluses into many of these devices. So you can now write on, the, on, on this device. So I can use this device in an average business day as my fully productive primary laptop. I can use it as a tablet when I want to you know, flip through a presentation or when I want to read a book or when I want to read a paper or whatever, whatever it might be. And I can use it as my notebook to take, uh, take notes in a meeting. And so you can, you can use it as all three uh, of these uh, kind of all at once. But anybody can do that in terms of the, in terms of the hardware. What really makes this, this work well is the software. And so if you think about kind of convertibles uh, or detachables of other types that you see in the market, th there's a fundamental problem you run into, which is you may have a, a, a convertible or detachable that's a wonderful PC, but then when you flip it into tablet mode, you don't have the applications there to be able to uh, to, to be able to make it a great tablet. Or you might have it such that it has a great mobile app ecosystem, but then when you start to do productive things and you want to have multiple screens and you want to have, uh, have kind of that multitasking, it's not very good at that. We need it to be good at both. And so one of the things we introduced last year is the idea of Android apps running on Chromebooks. And we're rolling that out to all of the Chromebooks that are being sold uh, in the market in 2017. Um, and now what you can do is essentially run the entire Google Play Store uh, on the Chromebook and be able to leverage any of the two million applications that are, uh, that are there. And so it gives you that kind of flexibility and versatility from an application perspective. You still get the productivity of a Chromebook, you know, multiple sized uh, window apps, uh, world-class de desktop browser, uh, multitasking, access to desktop virtualization for your Windows apps, all of those kinds of things. But uh, and, the, and the manageability that comes with it. But then in addition to that, you get all of these touch-optimized uh, applications, and you have that consistency. So if you're using an application on your smartphone, you can also use that same application on your, uh, on your, uh, your laptop now as well, uh, too. And so this is something that, that lets us kind of then really span from the phone all the way up through, uh, through the large, uh, large device. And the last part of that is, is really kind of the access to the different types of apps that you have. And so now we support HTML5 and we support, uh, we support Google Play, um, but we've also done interesting things to integrate in Windows apps. And so, for example, we've worked with folks like Citrix uh, to make it such that a Windows app can actually be launched from our launcher, uh, just like any other app. So you'll see an icon for that app in our launcher. You click on that app and it opens it in its own window. If you didn't know anything, you wouldn't even know that that was, that was actually an app that wasn't resident on that device. And so that way you can go to even the apps that, that you were using on other platforms as well, too. <clears throat> so that's kind of how we're, we're working on mobile productivity. You're going to see many more things that we're, we're doing there. Um, but the other part of this is this idea of connected workspaces. Um, how do we take a space, and like you know, I was saying, a retail store, a manufacturing shop floor, um, a variety of spaces, an office space, and really make that space connected and combine the power of Chrome and Android with Google Cloud to do really interesting things in particular vertical, uh, vertical solutions. And we think that what, by doing this, we can actually transform these spaces and actually create value. So in the retail store, make it such that people end up selling more. In a, uh, in, in a manufacturing shop floor, make it so that it's a much more efficient environment uh, as, as a result of this. And so take a very verticalized approach to this as well, um, too. So we talked about this a little bit before, but if you kind of look at how people think of data insights and actions right now and how they should be, it is a little bit different. So data, we're in an in, in environment right now in many cases where data is either non-existent or is, is based on poor sources or is really incomplete. So 
And in addition to that, a lot of the data coming in might not be stored in, in a centralized place. So how do we get it such that it's gathered from many different sources, from more sources, um, and stored centrally? The second part of this is the insights that you get from them are all uh, oftentimes very subjective. Um, so how can you make it such that you're actually drawing useful, uh, uh, useful um, feedback from, these, from this data and actually getting the right insights? And how do you get it such that you're drawing insights that a human may not have found if they're looking at that, uh, at that same piece of data? Um, and, uh, and then helping, uh, helping uh, enterprises and organizations by doing that. The last part is then the actions. Um, a lot of times actions are very slow to roll out. How can you make the actions in some cases immediate such that the, the systems themselves can learn from themselves and get better and better over, uh, over time? So we think that with the combination of Android and Chrome and uh, a Google Cloud Platform and, uh, and G Suite, we can actually start to do this. Because with Android and Chrome, you can start to get more devices of many different types out there uh, to, 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 different, uh, to different environments. And as a result of that, more data coming in uh, with it. You can also have a great security model by which you can actually secure and manage these devices in a consistent way, uh, such that you're able to, uh, such that you're, you're able to, uh, to increase the number of devices without increasing the number of, uh, the number of IT people that you need for that. The second part is Google Cloud Platform. Using things like BigQuery and machine learning, you can start to draw insights out of this immediately and, and start to draw those kinds of insights, like I was saying, that you may not see with a human eye. And then the last part of this is you can connect it to the productivity tools like G Suite such that humans can actually take a look at this and be able to get, gather their own insights out, out of this. Finally, we can connect it to a variety of other things going on within Google that make this story even better. Things like Firebase to make it so that you can very quickly and easily uh, develop uh, mobile applications. Uh, things like DoubleClick, such that you can be able to push, a con push content out uh, to, to some of these devices very, uh, very easily, especially things that are in customer-oriented spaces. Things like progressive web apps and, and Polymer that make it easy to build uh, very, very solid applications on the front end. And then things like Google Assistant, eventually, which, uh, uh, which can uh, make it so that users can start to get insights from this as well. And so if we look at kind of that, uh, that um, virtuous cycle that I talked about at the beginning, you can start by instrumenting things with the devices that we talked about. You can then analyze them with, uh, with the tools of Google Cloud Platform, and then you can improve them uh, using that data and using apps built on, uh, on top of that that, that that can change automatically with this. Um, and we offer many of the, uh, of the parts uh, that are here. But then the other part is that this offers an opportunity for partners to be able to actually build on top of this as well and build things that are there are specific for particular verticals. Um, and you're going to hear about one of these, uh, these solutions in a little bit um, where it opens up a set of APIs by which, uh, by which you can do, do this and actually connect together all of the various uh, applications that are there uh, within Google. So let me give you an example of this. Um, you know, all of us have gone into a store, and when we first go into a store, we see a bunch of different signs uh, that, that are there with the store. Many of these signs are, are, are paper. We've now gotten to the point where with Chrome, we can make it as inexpensive to put up a digital sign as it is to put up a paper sign, and in some cases, less expensive, because the paper sign you have to keep changing over time a digital sign, you don't have to do that. Um, one of the things we have, we released a couple years ago was an $85 uh, dongle called the Chrome Bit, which you can stick into a monitor and turn that monitor into, uh, into a smart screen, basically turn any screen that you have into a digital sign. So we're now starting to see retailers start to use it in really interesting ways to have up-to-date information uh, on, their, uh, on their sign. We're starting to see, though, others, uh, others use this in a very interesting uh, way to be able to do even more than that and actually gather insights uh, from that sign and be able to actually change things uh, as, uh, uh, as, 
as um, uh, they go on. And so I'm going to play this video. This is from Coca-Cola. Uh, Coca-Cola has been doing some phenomenal things with Chrome uh, to be able to, to, to really generate more sales in grocery stores of Coke products and other products uh, with digital signs. <laughs> that they had all over the world in every corner of the globe. Uh, it, it's an amazing thrill to be able to work on and really with the world's most respected brand as closely as I get to shape the future of it. One of the things that we see with the emergence of e-commerce is this change in consumer demand. This idea that we want environments and store environments especially to be more dynamic, more responsive, and more personalized. How do I create an environment that you walk in and you have instant wow factor? How do I make it easy for brands to be able to flight the latest and greatest content, the latest and greatest experiences, to store shelves and store aisles nationwide instantly? And we do that with some really intelligent technology. And that's part of why we like partnering with Google so much. We started assembling things within the marketplace, things like DoubleClick, things like Google's nearby API, the proximity API. And once we figured out that we could use the cloud to interconnect all these amazing products together, we were able to put together with a Chrome bit, Chrome OS, double click, and a little bit of magic from the cloud, an end cap that had a beautiful screen that we were able to fly in real time targeted digital content to. Ultimately, the end cap was able to produce for us an incredible ROI and do it at 10% of the cost of what's in the marketplace today. Coke really is the, at the leading edge of trying to figure out how to use devices in the cloud in very strategic ways. This idea of taking a store and connecting it really is what, what we're all about, and we're focusing a lot of our attention on making that happen. These new digital tools allow us to bring the Willy Wonka to life, to bring the magic back, to bring things back to the retail environment that wow, amaze, surprise, and delight every single one of our loyal consumers. And Coke and Google will be right there every step of the way. So one of the amazing things about that is that they've found that by putting this end cap there, their, their cost of doing that repays itself within less than a month. Uh, which is just extraordinary, and that is through uplift of sales as a result of that. Um, they're also able to use things like the Google Nearby API uh, to be able to gather, gather demographics of who might be near the sign and who, who might be interacting with the sign. So for example, they can put an offer up on the sign that can be broadcast via the Chrome box, which can turn itself into a beacon and broadcast a URL out, and then that can be actually retrieved and used by, uh, by, by a customer that happens to be going past that sign. And that makes the sign interactive as well, too. So they can better, better figure out what, kind of, what kinds of things works, what kinds of things don't, and, and be able to dynamically change their business. And this is a great example of kind of what we're talking about uh, with this idea of connected workspaces that iterate upon themselves. So in the concept of the store of the future, there are many opportunities like this. Um, one is to empower employees. Um, like I was mentioning with a lot of retail stores that want to be able to actually bring more of their employees online and actually put more of their processes online. You can now bring Android devices and Chromebooks uh, into those stores in a shared manner uh, such that you can, uh, you can empower those employees. You can do things like training. You can do things like shift scheduling. You can do a variety of other things like that and be able to empower those employees. Um, this concept of augmented shopping. You want to be able to actually help somebody when they're, when they're shopping. So, for example, a mirror that might show you what you would look like with a, with a, per, a particular type of clothing uh, on it, or be able to transmit an offer uh, to you. Immersive experiences using things like, uh, things like virtual reality to, to be able to actually, for example, take a sofa and see what it might look like in your house before you go and, uh, uh, and buy it. And then on the back end, being able to kind of streamline the services, streamline checkout, streamline management, streamline the supply chain as well by giving better data into the system to be able to know what a different store uh, or a particular store really needs. <clears throat> Another great example of this is manufacturing. Um, how can you actually put these kinds of devices uh, onto a shop floor, for example, uh, to, to actually make those, uh, make, um, make those uh, factory floors more efficient uh, and, and better? And this could be through smarter systems. It could be through connecting the salespeople directly to those systems and making the, uh, the supply chain better. Um, so a great example of this has been Sanmina. 
Um, and so Sanmina has been a customer that has been using uh, G Suite and Chrome for a very long time and has really figured out the impact of how this can, uh, how this can really help their business. So I'm going to turn it over to Srinivat uh, Ramaswamy, who's going who's to tell you a little bit about, about what uh, Sanmina has been doing. Thank you, Rajan. Uh, good afternoon, all. Let me start with just a quick introduction of myself before we get into the actual content. I'm Srivats Ramaswamy. I'm a vice president of IT at Sanmina. Also, I'm the CTO for 42Q. I'll touch upon the connectivity of the two organizations in a few minutes. Um, what, what we did, as Rajan pointed out to the, through the discussion or the, the presentation was how did we streamline our manufacturing processes? What did we do in enabling collaboration, connecting front office and back office using Chrome devices in the cloud to enable our people to be more effective? Right, that's kind of the theme of my content going forward. So before I get in here, just a quick question to the audience. How many of you guys are in manufacturing? Just if you could raise your hand so you kind of understand the context. Okay, all right, so very, it's a small audience there from that point of view. All right, so very quickly, you know, Rajan started out, he said a story at the beginning, you know, 10 years ago, he said he started with G Suite coming out and it's a 10th anniversary. Let me tell you the story on the same thing on the 42Q and Sanmina. 42Q is actually a, we consider ourselves as a leading cloud-based MES uh, mom solution provider. So since the audience has a manufacturing familiarity, let me give you, if you go to a factory anywhere, you can see there's a bunch of people, a bunch of products flowing, there's a lot of uh, you know, data being tracked by people on pieces of paper, everything. That industry generally is called a manufacturing execution area. And the systems enable you to basically automate that. So 42Q is a leading provider. And if you, if you think about, um, you know, 10 years ago, G Suite came, and that's when cloud was prominent. 42Q was launched in May of 2016, at, officially to the public market. And in that, Gartner wrote an article about us stating the first pure play cloud manufacturing solutions provider. So manufacturing is, is the industry that's adopting cloud as a last in general basis. So that's our unique differentiation. 42Q is also a business unit of Sanmina. If uh, I'm sure many of you haven't heard about Sanmina, so let me give you a quick view. If you ever bought a data center, if you worked on the IT industry and you bought a data center equipment like a rack, chances are some part of that rack came out of Sanmina. We make uh, servers, switches, uh, routers for OEMs, cables, whatever the case might be. We also make, uh, Sanmina is also a large corporation with 75 facilities globally. So we also have our uh, communication sector, medical devices. If you gone to a hospital, had an MRI, an ultrasound, chances are some parts of it came from us. We build on behalf of companies uh, in, the, in the medical sector. The significance is that, um, as I started earlier, uh, what happened for us was about uh, five, five years ago, uh, when we started to see our industry is very volatile, a few of us got together and said, we need to get to the cloud to enable our businesses operate better. And so that's when we had the idea that let's put this thing on the cloud. So we brought in a few people. Yeah, the, ironically, we had a similar experience that Rajan said. The feedback I got from consultants, from multiple employees was, are you serious? There's so much happening on the floor, there's no way you can move this thing to the cloud. So we formed a small team. We kind of looked at what we do. We migrated our application. This application has been built over 15 to 20 years within Sanmina for our own manufacturing. We, re we had it rewritten for the cloud, and we did a proof point. And then, into, into this, that start, then we realized that you know, this thing is starting to work for us. And as we start to migrate out, our customers asked, and that led to the formation of 42Q in 2013 internally. And then we did the go-to-market activities and we launched. The, the thing that's interesting as you go through is in order to enable uh, people to operate in the cloud, you need a gateway. And that's where I think the role of Chrome and Android significantly propelled us to get to the cloud segment. So moving forward, how, how does this work? So, you're buying product from your customer. You expect the product when they come to you to be very well designed, very well tested, and completely fully functional. Every customer of 42Q expects the same thing. So today, in, in the cloud platform, we are, run, we, are, we are getting over hundreds of millions of widgets going through our platform today. right? And that's 
That's the kind of volume we are handling. And when you think about that, when people are building a product in that kind of volume and complexity, what's important is the production supervisors want to make sure that they are supplementing the operator capability and the machine capability with automation that will prevent mistakes. Right? Simple example would be if you're building a product and that testing shows you that you know, the, uh, the product's kind of going to the tolerance level, when you're out of it, it'll automatically stop the machine. So we do things like that, what we call the force quality framework that allows production supervisor to really manage the factory. So what are the key questions they ask? Did I build the product correct the first time? It's a simple question, but when you look in below that, what does correct, do they build it correctly mean? Do the correct people touch it? So we have to track every operator. So our Chrome and Android devices, where the operator interacts with, we track the transactions, who did it, what happened, when. The timestamping is extremely critical. Right? So if you're building an FDA class three, class three for people who don't know is, it goes, it's intrusive into your body and people could die if it's produced incorrectly. So when you're building a product like that, timestamping and traceability becomes so critical. And that's why we call it the forced quality framework. Really, it ensures that the right people touch the product, the machines are calibrated and maintained correctly, the quality data was collected and processed correctly so that the product can be shipped, and lastly, we make sure that with all of that information, there was management oversight and approval to deliver the quality product. So that's really our first quality framework that allows our customers to effectively use it. And with all of this happening in the cloud, the gateway is generally a Chrome device or an Android device. So let's talk about uh, the devices as such used. Typically, in a, in a factory floor, when somebody is building a product, what happens is that, you know, as Rajan mentioned earlier, sales are sitting in the front office taking orders. And invariably, it happens that, you know, there'll be a really critical order somebody wants to follow through. You want to make sure you're getting the right data. You want to make sure that you are effectively uh, delivering the product to what you prom promised. So, and uh, what happens in our world is you can actually use a Chromebook or an Android tablet, log into the application as a sales, export the data into G Suite, share it with your production supervisor and say, here's kind of the five things that I want you to get me back in this so I can share the more recent uh, learnings to the customer or whatever that case might be. So what you're really doing is historically what people do, they'll take a piece of paper, walk over, take notes on what needs to be captured, come back in, craft the email out. What you've done now with this kind of an environment is that you've changed the whole thing. First and foremost, you allowed them to get access to data. Second is you allow them to take it to a collaborative environment like G Suite that allows you to share with the front office and effectively communicate. And that's, that's really the one part of that. Right. The second piece is, as I mentioned, factories have machines. The machines is an interesting part. Um, if you think about where the world is going, the common theme is uh, industrial IoT. And everybody has heard about industrial IoT, but I can tell you industrial IoT for manufacturing is progressing slowly. Part of the reason why it's progressing slowly is the complexity. You heard about the capabilities we deliver. Imagine, typically on an on-premise solution, when somebody buys something like that, they're gonna buy roughly about anywhere from six to eight servers minimum and up. You gotta get them set up, you gotta configure them, you gotta get them up and running, you gotta install the application, train the people. You don't need to do all of that with the cloud. Similarly, when machine connectivity, our, our view of the world was, how do you make the complexity go away? How do you simplify industrial IoT? So what we enable is there's two kinds of models you can have. Machines that can talk to cloud, the newer machines are cloud friendly. Great, you can use a standard protocol, IoT protocol, and connect to us like MQTT. Or you can use a Chrome that can be on site Right? but it's still local software-less. It's one environment for everybody. It connects, talks to the cloud, and assures you the local data integrity. So that's how we connect the machines and enable IoT for the open market. Lastly, you know, if you think about the products that we build, products could be as small as what we're carrying in the hand, to some products that are built by our customers are really huge. They could be 16 feet long, you know, 8 feet tall, and a really broad equipment size of a room. So you have to build a solution that allows you to be able to balance the two. 
And so our Android platform basically allows you to have a really significant user interface that you can read from 10 feet, 12 feet, or 15 feet away for operators who are operating with really bulky uh, products. It's a really tailored platform, but uses the same framework. Everything's running in the cloud, provides you with the ability to communicate and collaborate with our, with our uh, backend solution. If you've been to a factory, you know, um, digital signage has changed the world of a factory. If you're smiling, is that a question? No? All right. Um, digital signage has changed the world of the factory because in the old days, people used to put charts of quality information in the factory. When you walk in, you can see it. You'll see the lean and the Six Sigma and all the terms there. All that's gone away, and now you have a digital signage solution. What's powerful about this? In the old days, you could have a signage only inside the factory. With today's world, with our solution running on the cloud, and with the Android equipment that you can use for uh, displaying anywhere, we're able to enable digital signage. I could have a corporate office here that has a signage of my factory, as in this case, the factories in Singapore. Not only that, this signage actually, as uh, he pointed out in the case of the Coca-Cola, similarly here, um, our IoT platform enables you to get real-time information of the machines, and it shows you in red, green, yellow in an easy visual form as to whether there's a problem. It also shows you if there's a problem, has somebody uh, responded to it, and if you're an executive traveling, you can get that in your mobile device. Foundationally, all of this is enabled by using one consistent platform to deliver the content. The last use case I want to leave you with is general operations management. Now, we, talk, we talked about, if you think about where uh, the world's going, is clouds become from the start of the cloud, we started with you know, burst capacity, and now it's mainstream. Same thing for manufacturing. It's becoming mainstream. We don't need any more hardware, software, anything to be run on-premise to get manufacturing connected. You can connect the front office to the back office now with real-time transparency so people are able to collaborate and effectively respond to their customer demands. You're also able to easily connect the factory machines to the back end. With the kind of volume that's going through today in this platform, we get data from machines. We get data from over hundreds of millions of widgets that goes out effectively through our product. And all of this is able to do it today because you, we don't have to deal with you know, putting an application that runs a software on-premise and doing a lot of things. And we use basically our Android and, cloud, uh, Android and Chrome platforms to be able to be literally software-less on-premise. And that's the power of the devices that allows us to fundamentally simplify and even enable industrial IoT for manufacturing for vast majority of our customers. Rajan? Thank you, and I think that really kind of embodies how you can really change an environment uh, when you add the devices and we add cloud into this. So there's an estimate that if we think about, you know, we talked about 10 years back, if we think about 10 years from now, there's an estimate that 10 years from now, um, there will be 100 billion devices connected to the internet, which is just a staggering number. I mean, that's, that will basically be you know, 10 to 15 devices per human being uh, on, this, uh, on this planet. Uh, connected to the internet. And um, if you think about that, it seems unbelievable right now, but just like the cloud was unbelievable, just like those concepts were unbelievable 10 years ago, that is kind of where we're heading. But the, the point there really isn't about the, the, the number of devices. Really, it's about the value that you can, you can create. Um, by doing that and actually putting more uh, devices uh, uh, out there, by collecting more data, by, e by email, being able to evaluate that data, you can create empowered employees, you can create engaged uh, uh, customers, and you can create intelligent spaces. So with that, we'd be happy to take any questions. There's a microphone in the center, and, uh, and uh, we have a roving mic as well, too. Anyone? Okay. Well, um, if uh, if there are any questions uh, afterwards, please feel to feel free to come up to us, and uh, and uh, we, we'd be happy to talk to you more. All right. Thanks a lot. We appreciate your time.